Fan Xian asked his father to let Ting Zijing go. Fan Jian thought that Ting Zijing had been on file in the Ministry of Punishment, and he deliberately followed Fan Xian back to the capital, probably with ulterior motives. Fan Xian insisted on letting his father let Ting Zijing go, because he already regarded Ting Zijing as a friend in his heart. Seeing his insistence, Fan Jian had no choice but to agree. After Fan Jian left, Lu Ryu suddenly stepped forward to thank Fan Xian, and promised that from today, as long as Fan Xian stopped attacking, she would never trouble him again. As soon as Ting Zijing was released, he inquired about the document. Fan Xian told him that Wang Qinian would come to his door tomorrow. Ting Zijing was very grateful and offered to help Fan Xian kill someone to pay back his favor. Fan Xian was angry and funny, he had to let Ting Zijing save it first and talk about it later. Father Fan Jian kept his promise and accompanied Fan Si to withdraw Pai Gao with Lu Ryu and Fan Ruoruo. Fan Sija was overjoyed, and mercilessly killed the three of them without leaving a piece of armor. Lu Ryu felt anxious when she saw her son was complacent, but Fan Jian uncharacteristically did not speak out against Fan Sija. Ruoruo lost money, but she was not angry. Instead, she felt it's really like a family when it's so noisy. It was not until the night, when Fan Sija won the trio, that Fan Jian made a statement to end the game. On the other hand, Fan Xian approached Ting Zijing to inquire about Su Yinjiang's news. The fake secret order for Danjo's assassination was forged by this person. Ting Zijing didn't know Su Yinjiang well. It was inconvenient for him to appear now, so he recommended Fan Xian to go to a dark store specializing in news to inquire about news. Ting Zijing made a tailor-made night clothes for Fan Xian. When he came to find Fan Xian in the middle of the night, Ruoruo was also in Fan Xian's room. Fan Xian saw Ruoruo eager to try and agreed to take her on an exploration. When they were near the dark stack, Ting Zijing stopped Ruoruo and let Fan Xian, who had changed into night clothes, go in alone. Fan Xian entered the door and found that it turned out to be a casino, with a large group of people shouting and drinking, it was very lively. The shopkeeper looked at Fan Xian carefully before letting him in. Fan Xian told the shopkeeper that he wanted to know Su Yinjiang's social network around the inspection institute. The shopkeeper asked him to wait with a blank expression, and soon, a carrier pigeon flew out. No one knew that this carrier pigeon did not fly elsewhere, but flew all the way into the palace, and flew into the hands of Eunuch Ho, the great eunuch next to Emperor Qing. When Emperor Qing heard this, he was calm and asked Yuniko to pass the news to Fan Xian. Ting Zijing checked the secret scroll and found that Su Yunjiang had close contact with the East Palace during his lifetime, and couldn't help but wonder if it was really the Crown Prince who wanted to kill Fan Xian. Fan Xian felt that something was wrong. Wang Qinian had told him that the Su Yunjiang case was supervised by the Dean himself, and that the case file should be the top secret. With the power of the Inspection Institute in the capital, such a top-secret case file should not be so easily bought by him. He was afraid there was a fraud in it. The three quickly returned to the dark stack, but the dark stack was already empty. Fan Xian had a vague feeling that since he came to the capital, the Crown Prince was provoking him, and Prince Jing invited him to participate in the poetry party. The truth of the assassination was clearly revealed and everything happened one after another, as if there was a big hand behind everything manipulating everything, pushing him to the cusp of the storm. He didn't know that all this was Emperor Qing's test for him. Soon, it was the day that Prince Jing held a poetry party. Prince Jing personally waited for the Fan Ruoro and Fan Xian at the door. Fan Xian, regardless of Prince Jing's conspiracy, deliberately changed his clothes when he met the girl with chicken legs, and set out to find the lover of his dreams wholeheartedly. Seeing that he was late, Guabalcoan deliberately provoked a provocation, put forward a poem, and threatened to humiliate Fan Xian in public. His own way also fanned the flames, and he was arrogant. Fan Xian was reluctant to be in the limelight, but he was forced to do so. He refused the two of them to write a poem in ten steps. Instead, he proposed that he would only write one poem, if they could have one poem defeating his poem, he would not write poems for the rest of his life. 
Otherwise, they would not write poems anymore. Wabalkawin thought Fan Xian could only make one poem, so they agreed without hesitation. Fan Xian may not understand poetry and books, but what lived in his body was a soul from the modern age. Copying a poem casually would be a masterpiece through the ages. Fan Xian rolled his eyes, picked up a pen and wrote Du Fu's masterpiece Ascension to the Heights. The poet let full of literati in the capital far behind, let alone Wabalkawin. After writing the poem, Fan Xian went to the backyard on the excuse of abdominal pain. When he came out of the latrine leisurely, he suddenly felt a chill behind his back, and a ray of sword light stabbed him fiercely. Fan Xian turned over and made a move with the man. A male voice interrupted the fight. Fan Xian heard the sound and looked over, and there was a young man in azure clothes standing with his arms folded, dressed in a low-key and luxurious way, but his brows were fierce. The second prince, Li Chengzi, had been waiting for him for a long time. Li Chengzi bluntly stated that Fan Xian was at odds with the prince, so he planned to kill Fan Xian and use his corpse to reconcile his relationship with the crown prince. As soon as he finished speaking, the guard Xie Bian's sword had fallen on Fan Xian's neck, but Fan Xian was not afraid at all, and even picked up a bunch of grapes from the table and ate it. Not to mention killing a hundred Fan Xian would not bring the two brothers who were fighting for the throne back together. Even if the second prince wanted to kill him, he would not use such a reckless method here. On the other hand, Unico received the news, and hurriedly passed the news of Fan Xian's masterpiece and the second prince's private meeting with Fan Xian in the backyard to Emperor Qing. When Emperor Qing learned that the crown prince was with the eldest princess, he asked Unico to pass the news to them. When the crown prince learned of this, he knew that his plan to suppress Fan Xian by using the poetry party was in vain, and his face sank.